This is the One Up Radio Network, and now GFW Radio. Hello and welcome to the GFW Radio <laughs> Podcast. This is the podcast for some date. What is today's date? It's the 29th. <laughs> 29th. Thanks, Ryan. And I'm, I'm proud to announce you are also listening to the number 37 video game podcast, according to iTunes. <laughs> yeah. Yay us! Awesome. So, uh, so we're behind. Out of how many total? <laughs> yeah, thirty-eight. <laughs> I'm, I'm here with my uh, cohorts from GFW, who I'll let introduce themselves. Ryan Scott, Darren Gladstone, Sean Elliott, uh, Sean Malloy, still on jury duty, loser, uh, and filling in is uh, Nick Calster on the mixing board there. Hello. No mic, so if he yells, he can talk. Mix it up one time. Um, yeah, we're number thirty-seven. What do you guys think about that? It's like, who aren't we behind? I think we're just at the Minesweeper podcast, yeah. right? Uh-huh. I hate it. Grandma Ann's Minesweeper <laughs> podcast. I'm done. It's like like when I was in like, well, actually, I'm going to make up a story because I wasn't in band in high school, but I was about to say that. <laughs> I, like, I was. Like when I was a, a trombone player in high school, and uh-huh. they told me that I was number 36 trombone player. Yeah. But that, that's the point where I realized I wasn't cut out for You're right. yeah. blowing on the trombone. Right no, see, I was, like, I was like, you know, number three trumpet player in band. And number one and two, those guys sucked, you know? One, <laughs> one dude, he had like... Like, you know, his, like, cheeks swelled out whenever he tried to hit a high note. <laughs> and he couldn't solo for shit. And I'm, like, two seats behind him going, why am I here? I, and that's, like, what this is like. I remember I tried playing the sax, and, like, my music teacher was so pissed off. He actually, I was a number three sax player. And the, the music teacher was so pissed off, he actually grabbed the music stand and threw it across the room because I, I was such a crappy player. How many wow. sax players and trumpet players did you have in your school? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I think I, like, overestimated with my number 36 tr- trombone. Yeah. <laughs> we had a lot of brass. Fucking <laughs> Yeah, you've yeah. got a big horn here's, how bad it, here's, here's how bad it is. R- Retronauts is number 18, and we're number 37. Fucking Retronauts is 18. That's because oh, people like on. bringing it back. Recidivism. Uh-huh. Well, actually, bring it back, son. <laughs> we kid the Retronauts. We kid because we yeah. love. And now, and now we, and now we kid out of jealousy, nowhere. I guess. Jealousy will get you 37. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, I think, no, seriously, though, isn't it because, like, we dropped off for some weird reason, like, we fell off iTunes for yeah, a little Yeah, I think bit? our last couple episodes aren't on there, so that doesn't help. So that's a... An actual, you know, technical difficulty sort of reason. Still, but we're still making them. <laughs> so who's number we gotta, one? We gotta work. We gotta work on this though. We gotta get up there. Wh- who's number one? Well, number one, it's weird because they do it under like hobbies and games as a general thing. So number one is actually NPR's Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me, which if you've listened to that, which is rad, but it's it's a, a great game show. show. It's a it, game show in the sense that it's a that, that, that actually, Wheel of Fortune's a game show. Right. It actually is a game <laughs> itself. <laughs> yeah. You're listening to right. what, what's essentially a game. It's a game, game show, not a gaming show. Right. But, uh, and I forget, number two is X-Play, but then three and four are our own uh, one-up yours and uh, the one-up show. Cool. So, so that's good, I huh. guess. Yay, team. But even the WoW podcast that I'm on we've done two of those only two episodes and that's number 11 yeah we're 37 come on come on maybe people, people just i mean gfw radio uh, what does that even say to you know a lot of people change don't the understand name. what that is yeah the I mean, boobs show let's change it <laughs> 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 yeah we need we catch your name, name. Change. gfw radio ain't yeah. doing it that's it's not, not it. <laughs> what's egm at EGM, they're uh, number 15. See? I think we could easily be 14. We're, we're just way the hell down there. Come we on, gotta, people. We got to work on it. All right. All right, enough of that. Um, so, yeah. Here we are. This ain't getting us any new listeners. <laughs> <laughs> Here's why we're number 37. Because we just talk about ourselves. Right. And oh, we'll, oh and poor the, us. the fact that we suck. Eh. Okay. Let's on the, speaking of things that suck. <laughs> Hey, how about that Windows Vista launching <laughs> launching today, or, or yet tomorrow? Is it well, officially yeah. tomorrow? Officially tomorrow when, when this podcast goes out. And I was noting that here we are, the official Games for Windows magazine, and I don't know if anybody here uh, is going to upgrade. I'm not. If I, well, I was. <laughs> if they send me one. I'll, I'll happily upgrade the second I get it. But I'll be honest. I did get a free one. You did. And nice. I did. Very but cool. I don't think. Um, Give it to me. Do it. I'll be the guinea pig. I'll eat okay. that shit. It was just like Halloween. <laughs> Someone gets candy from uh, old grandma, like whatever uh-huh. Witherspoon. Well, the, like, unwrapped, I don't know. the unwrapped one. Yeah, and I would be the first to eat that. that yeah. I'm still alive. Crusty old Mary Jane uh-huh. from down the street. And and a piece of the razor blade sticking yeah. out. You'd so, still eat it. I'd, and then I'd say like my famous words were, "I'm still alive." And then 
and everyone else would just eat theirs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can have it because I'm it. afraid it's going to break my machine. I'll do it. Well, I mean, I, I've had it on a, I mean, my test machine so I could do the, the Vista. Like, yeah, see, if I had a free test machine, I would do that. Right. But I've just got the one. Well, I mean, I got to tell you, it's. I've had. Am I sorry, Nico? Is it just me? The reason I want to do it is because okay. I, I want to try. Uh, Flight Sim okay. in DirectX 10. <laughs> oh, yeah. I do. Do you? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, I'm waiting. No, I'm waiting until the first service pack. Right. I mean, like, a, a lot of people are like, you know, I, I'm getting a lot of questions asking me if, I, if, if, they, if they should upgrade straight away. And I'm like, you know what? Just hang in there. Wait wait for, like, your, ne- your, for your next computer you're going to buy. Yeah. It's going to come with Vista on it. Right. And I mean, like, it, right now, people are buying their computers and upgrade. I mean, buying uh, Vista upgrading, and it's legacy drivers, legacy hardware, not much DX10 stuff, DX10 ready stuff out there right now except for the high end 8800 boards. Yeah, I see that's the thing. I don't see any compelling reason to, to upgrade. And the DX10 games aren't out yet, so it's kind of rough. Right. And uh, actually one thing That's the thing. Once the DX10 games are out, it's going to be a no-brainer, but right. for now, right now, right now it's you're still playing games that are are you know current for you, but they're last gen by Vista standards and so you're not getting quite the performance so you do it other than like jumping on well, some well, like hype bandwagon. Right. right. Well, you know, actually it's kind of interesting. There's I, I was checking through a number of different te- like, I mean early tests that I that I had done kind of confirmed the fact that like some Vista you know Vista games are going to perform a little slower than XP, but I'm actually finding like you know the drivers are getting a little more mature, and while it's hardly you know hardly ready for prime time just yet, some things like for example, um, Call of uh, Call of wait, sorry Company of Heroes. Where is? <laughs> Call of Where is? <laughs> Where is? <laughs> no, co- company actually Company of Heroes for example is actually running a little faster in, in Vista than in, than in XP, which is kind of interesting. Yeah, but but it's just it's just it's one of those things that's going to keep evolving, and it's like not ready fully yet. I mean, they just they just released mm-hmm. the drivers for the G the eighty eight hundreds on Friday. Yes, yeah, forget it. I'm not doing it. But uh, and also I, one thing I, I I noticed I noticed noticed before and actually I just just before getting on the podcast some guys sent sent this around saying how a lot of casual games are broken inside of Vista. I mean I was noticing this with casual games and also indieware and freeware. Well I don't know if he was saying it was broken he, as much as he was saying that like all the new security stuff was was adding like an extra amount of hassle for those who are just trying to download stuff off the internet. That the things that are being done for good security reasons are actually creating these like barriers of entry to someone uh, just trying to do a simple download. Yeah, and, and so if you go to a gaming site like, uh, this is Wild Tangent that he's yeah, talking well, about, yeah. that instead of just being able to click and download, now you're getting like the 10, are you sure? You sure you want to do that? And that that's going to cause some users who aren't as savvy to, to be too scared to do it. Right, and that, that's exactly, I, I kind of pointed that out uh, when we did that early preview review, and it's, it's a simple matter of going into the user controls and, and basically just turning off of this feature, which basically kind of leave, well, technically would leave you more wide open, but at the same point, I mean, mm-hmm. I, I actually, I, I remember complaining to uh, the guys at Microsoft about this, saying, what if I could, like, have, instead of just having this binary on or off, why could I just toggle it, saying, okay, for games, let me, mm-hmm. you know, g- you know, give them the green light to go ahead and install stuff. Mm-hmm. But, um... I don't know. I mean, granted, I haven't... You don't want that to come up every time you're trying to download a JPEG of, say, you know... (laughs) <laughs> Jessica Alba? Right. Some naked chick, you know. <laughs> Please stop asking me if I'm sure. Would I'm you sure. Like to double bag. Hurry. <laughs> you hurry up already. <laughs> you are attempting to open. You know, she's kind of skanky. Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> Would you like to double bag? Yeah. <laughs> Please don't make. Please don't stop questioning me about it. You know? If you keep asking me, I'm going to get all nervous. All sites aren't <laughs> lemon party, so why is it treating them like it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I mean, technically, I have an extra machine, so I'm willing to take a chance, but I think that a little later on, if people are like hesitant about upgrading straight away, totally understandable. No need, no race. I'd say give it yeah. a little time. Now, the other thing I want to bitch about is because uh, we read take this. your copy, by the way. You can have my copy. Sweet, you can have it. Say, yeah, what? I mean, actually, I say, you know, for what it's worth, I, there are parts of it I'm really digging, especially because I'm a media center whore, so like I'm really enjoying the multimedia functions on it. Well, I've got media center on my Dell laptop that I bought, and mm-hmm. that's Windows XP. So what? Well, I mean, it adds, it, it, it adds layers of functionality on top of it. Like, I'm a, I'm a huge... Layers of functionality. Thank you for the marketing. Okay. <laughs> all right, all right. So here's an example. I mean, actually, because I'm, I'm a stat tracker for, like, football and stuff like that. Uh-huh. So as you're watching sports, it actually gives you sports feeds where you can track players, and it'll tell you how many plays per hmm. game and, you know, stuff That's like that. Cool. So it's, like, you know, hardcore nerdy stuff, but at the same mm-hmm. point, it's, like, right there. Takes, yeah. takes advantage of what you can do with a PC while watching TV. 
I, I just have this fear of like loading that thing on and then you know whatever shit not loading. Yeah, no, no, it's no, it's, it's, it's totally it's totally uh, a totally legit concern right now. Yeah. I mean, like, granted, I threw some uh, some like you know games that I knew would not. It's kind of like you know throwing a bomb in the room, saying, "Okay, what's mm-hmm. going to happen?" Right. I, I tried I tried installing you know um, Might and Matt, you know, uh, Dark Messiah, and Gothic Three, and stuff like that. And in most cases, like, installing Dark Messiah, that's like asking for trouble. <laughs> I Dude, you got. I wish, like, I'm just gonna say, I, I can uh, take all risks with Vista because the computer I'm gonna install it on is already like forked. I need to bring it back. <laughs> yeah. And beg Nick here if he'll uh, get it running for me again. He has uh-huh. some kindness to do so, that. Last time I took it home and played Dark Messiah for one evening, and the next day it wouldn't load Windows. Yeah. But the, the, like, however much <laughs> I played like four levels that night, and I actually really enjoyed the game, and it ran perfectly. So I have to step in now, and I feel bad that like they did something happen. I mean, it was the same card too on that computer is huh. the one i have here but something happened i don't know if they patched or what but it was running like perfectly and now i was like holy shit did this game get a bad rap the first like three or four levels were pretty pretty cool yeah i mean i like, actually i was gonna say i was enjoying it but it's just, i can't i cannot figure out why you it can, just like, keeps get, randomly breaking my you machine. can kick everyone you can kick your way to the entire game well, there's like a stamina you have stamina like you run out you kick yourself into uh kick fucking asthmatic in attack <laughs> 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 you can't just do that. And an all kicking game is kind of cool. I, I don't know. Kick it like kung fu. Um, once I get a rant about oh the eighty eight hundred. That's what I was going to rant. Oh about. yeah. Because it's too freaking big. Who has a box big enough for that damn card? Is I, it Darren? It, it, is it bigger than the seventy eight hundred? Oh yeah. It's right. I believe it's ten and a half inches long. Dude, <laughs> we'll just let it go at that. I'm not going to tell you who it sounds like. Insert, insert your, it's ten and a half inches long, and it's too freaking It's thick. so big! And it's too thick, too, by the way. It takes up two slots. It has the girth of a ketchup bottle. <laughs> it's too long and too thick. All right, that, we've beaten that to death. <laughs> no, not really. Number 38 this week. <laughs> Going down quick. But, dropping. but really... <laughs> But all all of that aside, seriously, I mean, I have a, I have a, my case is not small. My PC is not small. Never mind. <laughs> it's just too big for me. You know, it's it's, it's all about like breathing and eye contact. I you keep trying. But, but right, I mean, so okay, so I mean, but you do you? I, I tried do, lube. I suggested <laughs> I suggested taking out the XFi card and and I, buying I some did. room. I took out the XFi card. I Still swear, I took out well, everything it, else. It's probably too long because like like the drive bays no, are blocking. That's it. the problem. The drive bay is in the way. Ah. Do you have like a you have an ATX board or is it a, 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 a I mean like how is it full tower case or yeah. Hmm. Anyway, so I've got this great video card that I can't use because it's too long. <laughs> I just okay, need something. I need something smaller. We're like third graders here. I swear to God. I, know. We, I guess we just can't talk about this because we're too immature. It's too big. <laughs> he said big and long and juicy. <laughs> okay, we're moving on. We're going to return to this topic for when we can, too, so we can grow up. Or just, oh, no, yeah. Aces yeah. exist to run two of them bad dads in there. Uh, I know. And especially, actually, kind of making, that what do they me. call that? Why do they call that a SLI? They, I thought they called it a. Uh, <laughs> Okay, we're gonna another acronym. <laughs> Please, more. <laughs> yeah. Ryan's right. crying over here. <laughs> when we can grow up, we're gonna talk about this. DP mode. I'm able to uh, get oh, no. 85 frames per second. <laughs> DP mode. Oh, okay, geez. so moving on. Okay, we're gonna move on. Uh, what else? Uh, what? Oh, the other big launch this week. We'll get this out of the way too. Is Vanguard. <laughs> can someone, please, the silence why do you say it's a big? Room. Why is it a big launch? Cue the cr- Come on, can, it is. Can someone cue the cricket sound? Vanguard has anyway. been uh, been in development for years and years. It's made by a, a first, a, you know, a a triple A dev team. They made EverQuest One, true Hall of Fame game, and this is their follow up. They were not around for EverQuest Two, and this is their big follow up. When they first started working on this game, there was, as of yet, no World of Warcraft. So now that the game's out, they chose the order. Of, I got to. I got to interrupt. Yeah. He chose the order for the <laughs> topics in this podcast. I know. <laughs> Moving from <laughs> operating systems to hardware, to Vanguard. Oh, and we started out with war number we started thirty-seven. Off thirty-seven. Now, <laughs> people don't respect us. <laughs> We're going to give you more <laughs> operating systems, more hardware, more Vanguard. <laughs> On that. I'm telling you, that echo is like <laughs> fucking weird. Oh man, you're so right. So okay, go on. 
Because it wasn't like, you know, we just played uh, Bow Stations Midway and Supreme Commander. Well, we have it on the tournament list. Three. Yeah, we have it on the list. We have it on the list. Next, okay, next so week Vanguard. we're going in, in order of most popular topics Vanguard. to least popular. Or we'll just see if that me- works. measure it out. It's kind of like, yeah. <laughs> Leapfrog between them. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, okay, some people are going to care about Vanguard. So, yeah, we're, we're, we're knee deep in Vanguard right now. We are. Actually, none of us have installed it yet. So uh, not I, only did I bring it up, but none of us have anything to say about well, it. Well, I installed I it. I'm oh, still waiting for it to update and patch and all that stuff. But okay. I just think that the timing is so freaking weird. I mean, when I mean, like when EQ2 launched, it was right before WoW, and here, the next big launch for uh, Sony is Sony. R- right after Burning Crusade launches. Right, but I mean, we know why this is, and it's really no big secret. I mean, Brad McQuaid talked about it on the Sigil, uh, uh, his own official site, which is basically they needed to launch it. You know, they were out of development money. Sony told them, "You're done." launch this game and so they have um, it's it's really not a secret that, you would think that, that they're it, not I mean, done wouldn't it help Sony re- recover their uh, investment cost by being releasing it at a better time though yeah I don't know honestly I don't know what Sony's uh, financial stake in this is I mean that's just honest, not so. going to <laughs> it's a weird time to be launching any MMO right, right at Burning Crusade right. any time I mean hopefully they have to bank on a lot of players who never were either into WoW, of which obviously there are many, or others who were turned off by that game because it's too accessible. You know, these are the guys who... <laughs> it's too, this it's game's too, too much fun! <laughs> I need something less fun! <laughs> I need to work for my leveling! Well, either that or the guy just shredded his disc on, on TV and said, I'm going <laughs> to... I bank. need something else to play. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now we're free associating. Yeah, yeah that sorry. was a great video, though. You could. Do we have a link to it on our uh, it's on, on our message board? Now, yeah, get game a, videos. Yeah, Tyra apparently Banks. Tyra Banks show the Tyra Banks. I didn't even know she has it. Doing TV an show, intervention, but mm-hmm. I guess she does. Had an intervention with the WoW player because some uh, disgruntled housewife got on there and said that all her her husband does is play WoW. So, and, and I guess she was playing WoW during her labor. Yeah, she was in labor, and he went back for a couple hours to play the game, and then go back to the hospital. Uh huh. You know, he might have been in an instance. <laughs> <laughs> he was about Maybe to he level. was trying to feel, finish Dead Minds. <laughs> Come on, how insensitive could that bitch be? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, a baby. The best thing about baby, he's yeah. going to be around for eighteen years. I know, dude. He's only got an hour to do Dead Minds. <laughs> it takes the baby like, up. twelve months to level, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting. I was waiting be there for the dings. You know, <laughs> <laughs> First poop. <Yeah. laughs> the video on YouTube, the best thing was like the dude who posted it, his description tag was like <laughs> some some dumb shit complaining about World of Warcraft. Right. <laughs> right. It was right. so funny though. It was sta- I mean, they put on that music that someone, like that's someone's oh, right. job is they make like sure. trauma music or music that's right. supposed to right. like During signify. the Fire Bank segment and it's she's talking. Fucked up. Yeah, the, the, the music that's playing over is like that. You know, it's like you would hear yeah. when right. Just He's been drinking for 10 years. Mm-hmm. You know, it's got this sort of... It's, it's, okay, so it's then like, the wife is sitting behind him. She's like... <laughs> the satire look, theme. The baby cries, and he doesn't even, he doesn't even you know, turn away from the screen. But it's like, he knows you're sitting behind him, squeezing the baby till it makes a little gurgle. <laughs> All of a sudden, he's supposed to like turn around and, oh, my God! <laughs> look, the baby's crying. She's like holding it upside down. <laughs> Get away with that shit. I'm playing a while. <laughs> Shut that kid up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to hear orders from my guildies. <laughs> guildies. <laughs> we did that one time on, on the headset. It would just be like swatting the table and screaming like you're, like you're screaming at your kids that you don't God have. damn it, shut up. I told you to leave me alone when I play. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd be That's great. You'll eat when I'm done with this level. <laughs> yeah, but, but you're playing a game. It is pretty funny. You hear that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. That w- actually, that was a very weird uh, segment of that show because it just shows that like in – because it, it was clear that the people on the Tire Bank show, including Tire Banks didn't even they didn't know what this game was or, yeah. or what it involved or whatever it just sounded like to them it just was this horrifying it was like <laughs> she just kept saying that's that seems pretty intense though that's pretty intense yeah, actually even scarier Your than show is intense like sinbad's <laughs> you remember sinbad had a show yeah oh i missed that show All right. how, how, how does she have a show too why is she like giving out advice <laughs> Same reason we got a show. (laughs) (laughs) That's a pretty good point. Wow. Touche. Wow. (laughs) She's number 35. (laughs) Uh, Damn. Okay. Moving on. So uh, you, that's it. You have any anything else to say about Vanguard? Just bad uh, timing. I mean, it's something. Timing. It's a story. Yeah. I, I, all jokes aside, it's something that 
We have to wait. Let's see what happens. And there's definitely going to be a follow-up story involved here. Oh, yeah. And we're going to be working on that, like, you know, almost immediately and see what happens. But it, because it is, it, I mean, so much of it seems written in advance. You know, I mean, we can pretend, you can call us biased, but look at it. Look at the thing. Just the fact that we said, wow, Burning Crusade comes out. A couple weeks later, you're going to launch a new MMO that's hardware intent, that's far more hardware intensive, you know, so that mm-hmm. means it's going to have a harder time hitting the critical mass. Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing, just the fact that people play MMOs in groups, you know, it's not like one person in your guild is going to say, "Hey guys, you know, I'll see you. It was fun. I'm going to be in Vanguard now." Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it takes it takes whole groups of people moving. You know, these massive ex- MMO exes and stuff. And there's just all these reasons that say this this game is not going to be the kind of success that maybe it deserves to be. I don't know. I haven't played it. Well, but, it's kind but, of but for whatever reason, it's just not. It's a very ambitious game. Yeah. It is. The uh, <clears throat> the design for this is serious. You know, they're not messing around. It's a hardcore game. And some people are going to dig on that. You know, they're going to say like, oh, wow, it was like for MMO babies. And this is this is the real thing. Well, there was already one guy at the store who was like waiting for the pre-orders. Like we were at EB Games today and there was a guy there waiting, waiting for Vanguard. Waiting for yeah, Vanguard. cool. Yep. Because, you know, I I said, to put in perspective, I was the same way. I mean, in the office, I would say before Auto Assault came out, I'd go, that game is going to bomb so hard. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't like, it wasn't like gloating or anything. It was like, and it sucked because I was the one who played it. And I was like, this, this would have been a fun game. I played it for two weeks, but it was sad because there was no one there. It really, it really was. It was like an apocalyptic wasteland. Irrespective of the the content of the game itself, it just didn't have a community. It didn't do well enough to have a community that that kind of game ended up needing. My 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 unscientific prediction is that it will get a certain segment of MMO players, but these are going to be hardcore PC gamers and specifically hardcore MMO players mm-hmm. who have been waiting for something this serious. But I think in no way are they just going to get the mass of WoW players who are looking for something new because do, is I there, just don't do, see do, it. Do you think I don't see it being able to compete. Do you think it would bite more into like SOEs, like you know EverQuest players, than it will like other MMOs? Because it seems like. That, that would be the one that's yeah. closest. Yes, I did think at that. At some point, uh, World of Warcraft's community will move on to something else. Most likely, it would, be, it would seem obvious that they would move on to another Blizzard product because it's right. No, see, would they but, necessarily but, move on to a harder core but, MMO? But that's what I, I want to ask so. you. I mean, you're saying it's hardcore, but don't you have to be hardcore to play WoW in the first place? Or if you play WoW, aren't you hardcore? I mean, how how casual of a, of a MMO? I player think you're only you hardcore be? in terms of your time commitment. Right. You know, I don't think you're hardcore I, I think in terms I, of. <laughs> Well, it's, it's just how do you define hardcore? Well, most and people that play more punishment average more guard. than more than there six hours a week, right? Wouldn't you say? Well, I think there's that a fair, yeah. fair? Well, that, that's fair. But I think there's a lot of people who probably play a game more than six hours a week and don't consider themselves hardcore. But WoW is an easy game, mm-hmm. you know. I mean, my daughter started playing that, you know, when it first came out. She was only ten, you know. I mean, it. And there's people who only play WoW who don't play other games at all. <clears> and part part of what Ha- the reason it has 8 million subscribers is because it's so accessible. And they made it so accessible because they took existing MMOs at the time and they removed every single thing that was hard and, uh, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, uh, prohibitive right. about MMOs, whereas Vanguard is saying, actually, we like those prohibitive things. Okay. WoW is too easy. I was just wondering if you could not, if you could have the, your cake and eat it too by ramping it up, by introducing it ultra accessible, and then to keep people's interest. Because if it's too simple, so at the higher levels, you're going to lose interest. And, I, and again, I think that, that are, I would say that already exists. As someone does. who doesn't play that game, because when you're right. telling me about these like sixty man raids that take yeah. you an entire day, right? That's it, not accessible. No, it exists. Like wow, you're right. Pure, pure, By the soccer. time you get way up there, you are a hardcore player. Yeah. You know, Luke, he's a hardcore player. He's a poop sucker. When you hear he's a poop sucker. Yeah, when you hear guys like him and, and Damien over at EGM talking mm-hmm. about their wow experiences, or Sean Malloy and our own staff, these guys are hardcore players. Yeah. You know, to to to, to do, uh, succeed in these raids, you got to know exactly what you're doing, and it, and it's not easy. But. But that's the amazing thing about WoW. It it has room for those players, but then at the bottom end, right. you got, you know... You definitely want to ease someone in. I mean, we can use that as our transition to, to move on to another game. Uh, demo for um, Battle Stations Midway just yeah. came out. Darren and I both played that. Well, actually, I, I, it yeah. turns out I actually have the full game. I was, okay, I you have, have the full game. So you go, you go first. I, I'm that's, curious what your experiences are. So having just played the multiplayer demo, and it's got no tutorial, and there's nothing to ease you into it. 
uh, yeah, that... it's like, okay, what the hell's going on here? And you're assuming at first, you're like, okay, there's got to be layers of complexity I'm, I'm missing because it's, it hasn't taught me how to play. And then we kept playing and I kept playing and I'm this trying all these demo, things. Though. The demo? Right, yeah, right. Okay. This is the multiplayer demo that's out now. Um, yeah. I'm... And then eventually I'm like, I really don't think there really is anything else to get. I think this is basically just a console game that they call a PC game. You know, they did whatever they had to do with the controls, mm-hmm. and it was just a really simple and and ultimately dull game. So your your impression's not high so far. No, we, I, I want to see what, what Darren has okay. encountered because I, I mean, having spent the whole evening with it, I'm like, well, what, well, what don't, you, I know I was excited for it. Like as of last mm-hmm. week, I went. It was kind of the backfiring of a demo. I went from, hey, I can't wait, this could be my next game to play for a couple of months to like. Huh. You know I don't what? Know about if you, I, I don't you know, know what? I have I have not played the demo, so I can't even. But it definitely sounds like they they, they did it ass backwards because the single player game. I mean, I just just started off with that, and it kind of mm-hmm. it does ease you into the experience. I mean, you start off, it's Pearl Harbor, and you're controlling a PT boat, right? And that's it. And like, there's no other like. I think the thing is because it, it, because you have it's so wide open, you can control like a bunch of planes and boats and subs and have these all the different commands. And if they mm-hmm. just throw you into multiplayer mode, mm-hmm. it's almost like. Here's the sandbox. Here's a, sh- here's a sh- shitload of toys. Go for it. And they don't really give you the that, direction. See, that's, I think multi-single could be a big deal because in multiplayer, um, as you say, there, there are a number of things. You know, there's a Navy. There's an Air Force. Um, and you can take control of any individual unit in right. it, of a battleship, of a submarine, of a bomber, a plane. Mm-hmm. But when you're playing, there's no real point to. You're not going to be any more effective controlling your plane than you would be if you just let the computer do it. You could be a little more specific saying what you take out at times. But it's not like you can take out, you know, individual dudes walking around on the deck of a carrier or something like that. Right. They just kind of, like, do their thing. Well, I found that yeah. uh, when I was playing, um, when, you're, when you're not, I mean, like, because you do jump between different units, you can control a little later on. But it's the uh, units, play, the, the AI takes more of a defensive role as opposed to an offensive role when you're, when you're not in command. But you can tell it, like, I mean, I'd go to my key, you know, I'd hit tab, go to my map, and then tell my AI to, to play offensive. Right. And you just queue them up, say, I want this air group to attack this carrier. I want mm-hmm. this submarine to attack the carrier. But they be as effective. They might be. It might take a little longer to sink a battleship or something. But you're right. I mean, it's like it's it's a lot. A lot. Of, it's it's a weird hybrid of RTS and action. Mm-hmm. So if you're not, I mean, if you're not ready for it, it's it, it could. I mean, you could go. Oh crap! It's an action. Game it just seemed weak in both counts to me. Mm-hmm. Like the, the RTS thing seems super like bare bones, like super you know training wheel stuff. There. Yeah. Well, it wasn't I mean, like you're doing a fraction of the things that you could do in an RTS. You know. And then again, the action was super dumbed down so that the controls. I mean, the planes basically fly them. Themselves. I mean, everything mm-hmm. controls is just so so basic, you know, and clearly made. It's what's weird is the interfaces and everything. I mean, they could add layers of subtlety to with the mouse and keyboard that they didn't, and it's, it's, agree, it's, I agree. it's Actually, all console. It was really hard to control um, with mouse and keyboard. I ended up having to plug in an Xbox 360 controller in order to make it play. Right, which seems weird because you think if you're weird. making that is kind of if you're lame. making a game, a World War II game about the <laughs> Pacific theater that's using you know ships and stuff. I don't say that that's necessarily. I mean, I say it makes a lot more sense to a PC market. Do the age of the average PC game player, and also like how well that that subgenre of games has done. So many World War II games mm-hmm. that you could put, that you could put so many more you could put out on PC in a year than you can on console and get away with it. And it seems like, hey, great idea for a PC game. And I originally thought it was. So I was and telling I, people, and me too, and me too. And, and actually, I'm still I, I haven't gotten that far enough into. I'm only like maybe a mission or two in, so I haven't really gotten the full flavor of it. So I'm still gonna like. It's kind of what was it the half-hearted fist pump or? <laughs> <laughs> That's another game, but. And, but to be fair, too, Sean, I mean, you're, you're playing the demo, right? I'm playing, and this would I'm not be the, the first time that a lame demo has come out for a game that's turned out to actually be exactly. good. Exactly. I, right, I, I, right. I think, I, I think they that, might have just made a bad demo. But at the same time, I think, like, say, for example, the 2142 demo was entirely indicative of how the game well, was. Well, sure, right. Was. I mean, could, in a multiplayer yeah. setting, the demo just means one map. So right. the units are going to be different. Largely just cosmetically, you know, mm-hmm. well, um, you might have a Corsair instead of like a Wildcat or something like mm-hmm. that. But I mean, you've got a full map and you've got the game mechanics and mm-hmm. how everything works. And if that, if on that level, if you're like pretty bored mm-hmm. and you're like, we just turn and even rather than finishing a game, you know, we just turn. Well, let's start another one. Well, if, well, if the game, you know, what the game ships tomorrow, so we're gonna have we should have box copy, but you know, really quickly, and it just be a matter of seeing how well it really does play out. I mean, I'm I'm curious. Right, well, like you said, single player. I mean, I could, you know, hey, maybe this well, is. You know, Maybe Perfect. It's, worth, it's worth revisiting next week. We'll see how it, yeah. uh, how it goes. I got it. Yeah. Don't. don't I'm, I'm talking, to, like I said, about the multiplayer demo and nothing. That kind of bums me out because I, I didn't my, take my, the demo My yet. hunch is it would have to. 
be pretty surprising for the multiplayer to be I different mean, than the demo. I mean, that's yeah. the point of a demo, to give us a vertical slice <laughs> yeah. of, of what Okay, the game so, part, so when we come back next week, let's remember Battle Station Midway right. and Vanguard. Hey, um, two games to check also, in. Also, before, before we go too far off the Battle Station Midway topic, yeah. wasn't there a game, a Pacific Storm, Ryan? Does that sound familiar? There was like a CDV game that came out. It was kind of like this. Uh, mm-hmm. how, I mean, I don't, I don't remember. I don't. I didn't. I didn't remember seeing the review on that one. Who had that one? Fair? Do you remember? I don't recall. All right, and that's another thing to follow up for the next episode because it was a similar kind of idea as uh, Battle Stations. Midway. Some of the stuff looks really cool. I'll say oh, that. Like if you're in the sky and you know flax coming from all the ships, and you just see it like you know shooting up at you, other planes chasing you, you your gunners on the on the tail of your plane are automatically firing away. It looks pretty cool. And the detail, yeah. I mean, like you're like I was like you know just driving on a PT boat and like you're dropping depth charges, you see the barrels roll off, or you yeah. just, or you see the guy the gunners on the ships just kind of like each like, ship, each, yeah. each manning an independent turret looking for a nearby target. And ship, you'll, it'll visibly start sinking, and then you go, you hit R on your keyboard, and you go in, and you change your crew to over to, to, to manage the flooding. If, you're, if your ship's on fire, you can go in. And those are the menus I was saying are clearly designed for console. Mm-hmm. So instead of just, like, why would you have to go to a sub-menu? If you're controlling a ship, and you've got a keyboard with all those keys, you just press a button. So, wait, so, so say, put my, put my uh, manpower on the uh, fire. I didn't, get, I, didn't, I didn't get that far. There, 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 are no hot, there are no hot keys for that? Um, maybe you could put them on for it. Instead, you open a big window, a very, very console-centric, and then you move your mouse and you click on them and you can tell it's all based on a controller layout and th- maybe they are I have to go back into it I only spent you know I, you, you know what? again I, th- I think this is probably the curse of making a multiplayer demo without a proper tutorial so yeah, that's a that's a bad idea in general and I played I played the same one on the console I played the 360 demo as well mm-hmm. and uh, it's it exactly the same the game is identical and it was just so weird I mean not many people were playing it and it's like if you're going to introduce a new I mean if it doesn't matter if you make a deathmatch game who cares don't waste your time but in a game like this you know, it's like explain how so people can appreciate what's going on. And yeah, I have the same I thing totally for the uh, insects infestation uh, mod that came out. It's like you just <laughs> if you you know the tutorial is in a PDF form. At least there is one there, and it's just like if it, no one's going to look at that. You you need to do right. something interactive. And they did when the hidden came out. That was great on their part as they did an interactive tutorial. Right. Um, so, Mr. Elliot, yeah, tell us about uh, other things you saw over at. Uh, at your uh, Midway. Mr. Sean Elliott was at in the Midway Games, whatever they call it. They had some kind of gamer day Midway thing games there. Day. Viva Las Vegas. So we went to Vegas to check out some new games, and you were happy, I think, in general. Yeah, you? it was with what you saw. A, a lot of really cool stuff. I mean, the big big standout for PC, obviously, is Unreal Tournament 3, formerly known as yeah. UT 2007. I can't uh-huh. wait for that uh, game. Our next uh, cover story, mm-hmm. by the way. And so I played uh, multiplayer in that, the um, Capture the Flag with Vehicles. It's a separate, you know, they have separate, all these different modes and mm-hmm. so it works differently when you have vehicles um and that well that's not like sort of the big flagship mode on that it was a whole lot of fun uh the game looks great i mean if you played gears of war i mean definitely that level if not better you know a lot mm-hmm. more i mean cause it's a lot a, a lot more uh they, I don't know, a lot more flair, you know, waterfalls and things like that that are pretty and eye candy that you don't see in mm-hmm. the uniformly drab and, you know, dusted over Gears of War maps. Um, some off the bat, I'll just sort of like game, you know, give you some gameplay things I like that I knew were good. Um, one problem in that kind of game is scale. We've talked about it all the time when I talk mm-hmm. about this sort of game. It has to do with what happens when you don't have a vehicle. I mean, is the game going to hold up when you're basically like taking the heel toe express from your main base to the mm-hmm. to the next firefight. Mm-hmm. So to fix that, they throw you. You get a hoverboard that you can use anytime you want, and that was great. So you do some mm-hmm. kickflips. Um, so what, <laughs> that's just sitting there in your inventory. Just it's in your inventory. You go to it, but the trick is is that to keep it from turning into a game like you know tribes where everyone's got a jetpack, where everyone's yeah. on a hoverboard. You don't. You, you can't use your weapons when you're on it. And okay, if you're smart. if you're hit when you're on it, it throws you down, and and it basically takes you a while to get back up and get your shit sorted out. So, so, you so, you're, like, so, so you're like you're like winded for a second and someone right. can someone like deliver a blow on you while you're on the ground and kind of win and they can yeah and they can hit you again in follow up shots so the thing is it's mobility and speed when you need to get somewhere but when you don't think you're going to be fighting or a risk you want to take say you grab a flag and you want to get the hell out of there you know, mm-hmm. then you can do it, and you're risking like, well, if they hit me, and knock me down on this thing, I'm going to be laying there. Mm-hmm. So that was um, really cool. Can you also go sketch on the back of somebody else's and, car? And, or something? and so yeah, you can hook up to someone else's vehicle. Classic problem, in this, another <laughs> problem in this type of game that goes along with the this, this scope and the scales that people don't want to. I mean, why do you want to be a taxi driver? You get a vehicle, like fuck them. I want to go drive out to the action, mm-hmm. and everyone's like, need a ride, need a ride, need a ride, and you just keep hitting F2, F2, uh-huh. negative, 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 negative. In this, in this 
this case. We I should do that in you. Battlefield 1942, though. I would just drive around <laughs> right. in the in the truck and then not pick people up. With the horn honking or just talk the horn the whole time. Yeah. You got like that's what I did. Like, come on, and then I would zoom off. You got the bird as the word playing, and you just like drive by people and tease them, or like yeah, pull up by them, just like in real life. Like you're in high school, you see someone. Well, I guess you don't see so many hitchhikers, but we we would see enough hitchhikers, and like you pull over and you're like, yeah, you know, your friends in the side are like, come on, come on, and then they start running, and then you just like honk the horn and, the and they move on. Yeah, that's yeah. what I did. Or I'd run them over. Little bang so I do that. Take the team kill. People in the game. So here you can hit them with uh, like a sort of laser tether. It's kind of like a ski rope, but that's that's energy power. And that's cool. Because I will fire my beam. If you know, you can just sketch on that. You know, hitch a ride on it, and if you want, you scroll up with the mouse wheel and pull yourself like you know into the vehicle. You you decrease the distance and the length of the rope and mm-hmm. the laser rope until you're able to just hop right in the vehicle. Mm-hmm. If there's a passenger seat, that is really cool. The other thing that's fun about that is that you can um, use it as sort of like a clothesline, like or a garrote in a clothesline combined. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. if you you swing out like you would on the wake of a of a boat on your on the back of a jeep. Or oh, something, cool! So, so the, the laser beam will just head, nice. right, you know just cut they cut their head mm-hmm. right off if they. Mm-hmm. I didn't see if you could duck if crouching is enough to get under that. That would be pretty funny. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, because there's but, a, I know like they had the um, what was it in, in UT 2004? I think it was called the Mantis. It was like this like buggy and it had these blades would right. extract from the sides. It was the same principle. Yeah, same, yeah. Pr- same principle. But we, and that, we, but, we, that, that vehicle's still in there too. Cool. Yeah. Um, and one one thing that was cool. Another thing. So so the reason I was pointing out the hoverboard stuff is just their attention to the needs of that sort of, and the flow of that sort of game. Mm-hmm. And another example would be that uh, on the map that we played, there are all these infantry only paths or very light vehicle only paths. Like the Darren, what's the the Necro Speeder bike called? Uh, the Viper? The Viper, yeah. So the Viper could go through and people on foot, but you couldn't get tanks through. You couldn't get Jeeps through. You definitely couldn't get, like, the Dark Walker, which is the big giant Necker's tentacle monster. That's awesome. You couldn't get that in there. And that was cool because, again, you don't want to be the guy that's sitting there getting hit by the walker over and over again mm-hmm. and they have to find some some way about it but i did i hear there's something really cool with, oh sorry you go first i did explain and i do this at every demo it's funny back i remember when like star wars battlefront came out and at the demo there like the first thing i do is get like a scout walker and then just go base rate people because they never figure out in that <laughs> environment what you do to take down a vehicle so i did it with the dark walker and this <laughs> and i went over to the necker space and there was like there was a bunch of guys that write for other magazines and stuff there and i just would over and over again I figured out the three exit points from their main base. <laughs> just just going to hover over just them and nuke them. Just like <laughs> turn them all to pudding the second they would step out over and over again. And the thing is, is that that game is, is going to have to have, and I'm sure it was even in place in that build. I can't imagine it wasn't, but some weapon. I mean, I know you can get a lock with regular rockets. Mm-hmm. There are other, other varieties of... Uh, of weapon like the, from UT 2004. What was yeah, the, the, big, what, the, uh, the stinger? Axe, it was something with an A. Why am, I, why am I drawing a blank right now? It wasn't axon, but it was something. So, but anyway, there's there's that, and and that would nuke them. But like a javelin kind of thing. Um, yeah, and then I mean, so there has to be something. But it's like in that environment, people don't know what it is, and you just hoard the vehicle. <laughs> and I couldn't help myself. You know, so. there, there was actually there was something. Someone was telling me about this. There's something really cool with that that walker, and that like let's say you're going up against a sheer mountain cliff. The tentacles kind of like cut. In. I'm sorry, I'm making <laughs> glasses. I'm sorry, Dude. My glasses. No, but like you have the, the tentacles from the day walker or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, basically, they plant it, like the tentacles into the side of a mountain so right. they can do a vertical climb. Yeah, I didn't see in break out the the geek term. It's like in uh, inverse kinematics for that when you're actually matching a footfall to the geometry. Mm-hmm. And I didn't see it. I saw that it was bluffing that to an extent that it was cool. Mm-hmm. I mean, it wasn't like an exact you know application of. But here's a footfall, and then it's going to apply mm-hmm. the physics to this model right. and go. But it looked cool, and it definitely works that way. And that's all that matters, right? Right. So you could climb up mountains and stuff. And it was funny because I would take this thing and it functions in a way a tank or a walker would, but so much better than like the battlefield walker that's like you bump into a tree, like oh, the, oh, the, oh, the chicken walker that yeah, can't knock over it, anything. It's just like, yeah, then you're stuck there, like marching in place. And this thing can actually do different things. You can cross rivers with it and things that would stop. I mean, exactly what if you it would ever have such a ridiculous vehicle, I mean, that would be the payoff for it mm-hmm. is some kind of mobility. Otherwise, you just use treads, right? That's so right. So I take it up to a mountain, and it was pretty funny because people aren't expecting to look up and see. I mean, they're getting hit by something mm-hmm. coming from way the hell up, but they're not expecting it to 
be the equivalent of a tank that's on on this little peak, you know. So I'd do that right in front of their base. That was part of how I yeah. I, I would basically walk right up the thing and, and sit on the top of there. Um, and it's got a cool another fun thing about that vehicle is that guy, it technically can't the main gun can't traverse low enough. And and the other weakness to that thing is the gun traverse is super slow, and it, but it actually draws an arc as you're you know as you're shooting, so you just see you know kind of trace trace a path across the, the mm-hmm. terrain. But guys can get underneath you and you can't hit them, you can't do anything. But you have this alt attack that sort of throws a shock wave out and it will throw them on their ass. So if you get a whole bunch of guys like messing around beneath you, you can at least like stun them for a second with that and try to walk away. Mm-hmm. So some of that stuff was pretty fun. That was pretty cool. Man, I can't I can't wait for the. I know they didn't really. They, they, I don't believe they showed it off there, but I can't wait to see the uh, war front, the, the warfare mode. Yeah, I definitely want to oh, see. That's the new mode, right? That's the new mode. Plus, that and, and, plus, yeah. and plus, also the single player campaign, <laughs> which actually, mm-hmm. shameless plug, we talk about it in the new issue. In the uh, in the cover story. In the cover story. Which, well, it's not, yeah, it's not out for a couple weeks. Another still. big notable difference worth commenting on is that they took out all the trick jumping in it. Um, Double jumps and all that and stuff? It's gonna, yeah, it's going to freak out a lot of people, especially because that was the way they played. I mean, mm-hmm. if that's all you... Yeah, it was I mean, like super hyper kinetic. That's uh, all you did playing the other game, but it got to the point where you wouldn't know what killed you or how. And it's because it would be a dude like triangle jumping over your head and hitting you from above and stuff. And they didn't yeah. want. They wanted it. St- it still has a quick speed and whatnot. That's, that's why I stopped playing that. It game, doesn't actually, have actually, you know, quite too fast because or? yeah, I would just log on and be dead, 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 <laughs> right. dead. Man, okay, I'm gonna go play something. I can this play. is one of those cases where I think that's such a good. Fi- I'm, I mean, I'm totally happy with that because it's still fast. Obviously, yeah. it's not Battlefield. It's not like it doesn't have you know random. Accuracy deterioration over distance, and depending on the caliber of weapon and, and, and or any of that stuff, but it's it doesn't you don't have to trick jump your way the entire yeah. game to enjoy it, and that's mm-hmm. cool because it's like I mean anytime Team Fortress whatever if someone if if you're in the presence of like good straight jumpers or whatever you have to do it or you can't play with them right and it, I mean so it's almost like make it accessible to everyone you know mm-hmm. I don't know I mean that's that's an age old argument but it, it's for for better or worse depending on who you are and what you want out of your 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 shooter that stuff as far as I can see it isn't in there and I, I definitely like that Ryan do you ever play shooters? No. I think the last one no. I tried was well, Battlefield 2, right? I think that's the last FPS I tried to play, yeah. I'm, it's it's not so much like shooters, but first-person games. What, do they give you like, because of the... Uh, do they give you an do you or something? get the motion thing going? I, I just can't get into first-person games for whatever reason. Even Oblivion? Like huh? Even Oblivion? And not, not even Oblivion. Just, <laughs> wow, so, even, so not even a non-action game. You just have a problem with that perspective? Is that what it is, or more or less? Hmm. But it's not like it's not like it makes you sick. It's just like you just have an issue with it. You just don't like playing those kind of games, right? I mean, I don't, I don't know about the on foot stuff. You could play in third person in UT. I'm pretty sure you can. But all the vehicle, yeah, that's third person. Hmm. About the closest I've ever gotten is um the Metroid Prime games on the GameCube. Oh, well, of course, that I always make an exception. That. But that's. And even though it didn't come from Japan, in spirit, it was in Japanese. I mean, obviously, you know, <laughs> Samus. That's yes, the only reason I give it a chance is because it's on, you know, I mean, it's the Metroid series. Right. I'm, You'll make an exception for even, Metroid. But I didn't even get very far in those before I stopped playing them. <laughs> What's a little vertigo when Samus Searing's on the screen? <laughs> <laughs> she, she's hot in a non... <laughs> yeah, never mind. I'm going to stop right there. We'll, bring, we'll come back to that topic when we, when we talk about on our agenda is sort of uh, the, the questionable, the rebirth of the adventure game. But in light, <laughs> right. part of the conversation come up from the the DS game Hotel Dusk and totally, totally. But uh, but as far as but yeah. back 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 to Vegas for a minute though. Mm. Um, well, first actually, before you leave leave uh, UT behind, I say I'm so glad they changed the name. I was you are ne- right. Yeah, I was never a big fan of like the 2003, 2004 kind of. Okay, it, but well, wait, I understand wait. why they changed can't, it. They can't ch- they count though? I know that's the other because it's like it's not Unreal Tournament three. Well, right? I, guess, I guess technically they saw 2004 and 2003 as kind of like. Two, number two, I guess. I don't know. But there was 99, 2003, 2004. Yeah, I know. You know, I, the naming convention bothers me, period. I mean, I would have changed it to Unreal Warfare and just left it at that. Is Why is it the Xbox 360? There weren't 359 <laughs> <laughs> versions prior to it. That's Fair right. enough. Uh, <laughs> boy, takes that's that argument end, down a That's effect. the end of that argument wah, right wah, there. Wah, wah. No, but, okay, you lived with that, you're going to live with this. <laughs> Suck it up. <laughs> no, but uh, and how, actually, how is Stranglehold? I'm going to look... I'm, uh, Stranglehold's pretty cool. I mean, it's uh, 
It's, a re- it's got a massive D. <laughs> does, it have, does it have anything at all to do with like, John Woo? I mean, does it? Well, it's got the care. I mean, it's got uh, film me in Ryan. What's his name? It's got Chow Yun Fat starring right. in it, and his his you know his likeness. His and likeness. John all, you know, he did all the audio stuff for it. Yeah. What does it mean? So you're using and I guess Ch- Chow Yun Fat. Is, I mean, uh, John Woo is you know they showed clips of him in the studio and talking to their developers, and he's supposed to be the wise sage there, saying like, hey, this isn't what I would do, or this is how you more dubs. I want this more is dubs. how you increase the action, you know, fifteen <laughs> percent. Um, but the game is really. I mean, you look at it. They don't want me to say it. <laughs> whatever. I don't. It's it's like it's Max Payne. Well, Max Ma- Payne three or four. Or whatever, you know, Ma- you Max, know? Max I mean, Payne stole it from Hardboiled. Hardboiled just taking it back. Right. That's right. I, I don't know if he. I mean, obviously. I mean, I, I think like Max Payne two had a really did some cool stuff with with narrative in there mm-hmm. and like that. And maybe this, you know, maybe we'll get to work work that to work here. But it's really like if you just take everything that you know made Max Payne, you know, hyperkinetic and whatnot, and just amplify it a dozen times. Um, and those guys, the guys making it, did the, the psyops game, which was a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that, so they've that, definitely got like, I mean, there's some really was those guys. goofy choices with that That's game. Awesome. I mean, the story was just balls, and, and there were all kinds of other mm-hmm. issues. But uh, well, the physics made that game. I but mean, the, that, yeah, but just the, the ability to like move through the environment and did you say the story with balls. Yeah, <laughs> okay. we, did, we brought this up before. I said something with balls. Is that good or bad? And then I said, well, think about it. Oh, God, that never... story is balls. It's good, of course. <laughs> no. Well, I don't know. No, no, no. no Depends no. on who you're asking. Right. So, <laughs> and in my case, it's bad. Okay. So, um, but it's really cool. I mean, the, the only things I had, you know, the only concerns I have is, like, how are you going to keep a game like this entertaining level after level? Because yeah. there's no cover system or anything like that, and that's not important, you know, because that's tightness for pussies. This is the guy that, that runs around and shoots everyone in slow-mo, and then when that doesn't work, he makes it go even slower. And then, <laughs> just, and then they call that, they trademark another name for that. Tequila time. Right, and they uh-huh. introduce you, there's the tequila bomb, and there's all, you know, uh, all Actually, please, things. after this weekend, um, no tequila bombs. No tequila I, I know. <laughs> so, um, but the thing is, is you know, it, it, if that's the case, and it, you, you have all these ways of ripping people up in slow motion, you know, you could trigger slow motion by doing a dive, by falling over <laughs> sideways like Max Payne would, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, you can, all these other, like, you just trigger some one of the one of the tequila bombs is you just all of a sudden almost freeze time. You you click it, you point on someone wherever you want to hit them, shoot, and then it's like you see the individual bullet come out of your gun. You know, hit them in this basically, you know, uh, what would it be money shot? You know, of uh, of, of, of a graphic violence, and then. Uh, Start time back up and go on to the next one. So basically, know? the game is like so, three hours long, but you, with all the slow mode, right. like it tends to fifteen but, hours. But so it's like all I could see is that they just throw more and more enemies at you, or make them more lethal. So you have to just be, be that much faster in shooting them, or whatever. I mean, because when you're dodging bullets, it doesn't it doesn't work that way. I mean, where you're not, I didn't see so much like you know where you're using the slow mo to dodge bullets is just to to help you hit more mm-hmm. people in the amount of time. But so I'm curious. I mean, it definitely it definitely seems like a fun game. But I want to, I, I do want to see there without unless it's like narrative and a good variety of levels and i think that is there because they showed you know we've seen you know some of the chinatown outdoor levels and stuff um and then they showed inside the natural history museum and you're walking up the backs of dinosaur you know bones and stuff like that mm-hmm. so those are ways that they could keep it interesting throughout cool um actually so sounds kind of good to me i'm actually looking optimistic, forward to that one. definitely optimistic about mm-hmm. the game yeah, hopefully it'll be a what was the quote again that robert had for a, a ballet of uh, blood and death or something oh is that the one where he ended up on the box or, <laughs> yeah. or was that something else so that was that Max was the one. Payne Max, Max Payne 2, yeah. Oh, right. Max Payne 2. Yeah. Poetic Ballet of Death mm-hmm. or something. And they had, uh, <laughs> what's, I didn't get to play it, but um, Black Sight, Area 51. Area 51, okay. Which has got uh, Harvey Smith who worked on the Deus Ex games with Warren Spector, and he actually got his start in the business as a tester for uh, System Shock 1 <laughs> is on it. And it was an interesting pairing because when you think of... Uh, you know, Area 51, you think of tavern furniture. You're like, is this game, like, now 50% more resistant to cigarette burns or whatever, you know? I'm thinking, like, every every bar I've been to has got exactly. Area 51. They get the and, orange, and, and, bright neon orange guns. And, and maximum force. Yeah, the digitized dudes <laughs> coming out, like, making minimum wage, like, <laughs> some, bad some, Halloween costumes. Some, some you know? dude with a rubber, rubber mask over his head popping out. Yeah, you can imagine, like, Uwe Boll directing him, like, <laughs> die faster, <laughs> die harder! <laughs> oh, die yeah. lovely! That, that's his next movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he should make one of that. Yeah. I mean, he, I think so, you actually just came up with the title first. So, you know, in, in light of those origins, and Harvey Smith's pretty, like, down-to-earth guy from what I gather, and, and he'll say, like, yeah, I mean, I... 
like it's important i've never done like i mean I, it's not like i'm above having a joke or a good time but I, he's never his response with this is, is interestingly it's not like okay let's be campy with this and say and let's just run with these like like shady tavern origins you know mm -hmm. he wants to make something serious out of it mm -hmm. and in the way that like that he did with the deus ex stuff and um i think well, he talks a good game and the game looks like good but it remains to be seen you have to play more and see how well, did you, you play know. the last game the, uh, the original I did one? Uh, yeah he didn't have anything to do that one I played right. the last one it was a decent game right I mean, I mean it, it was okay. it, it also went for that kind of like it kind of ignored its roots except for like in the very beginning there's actually an area 51 machine somewhere that one was full of in jokes though but, but, it, wasn't, one, but it wasn't like totally campy though right but the difference is in that game say for example you uh I mean, it was like Art Bell, kind yeah, of. Yeah, yeah. But, but, I mean, you run into a level, and it is basically a stage for a fake. The moonlight, moonlight, the moonlight, yeah, that's you know? exactly what I was just going to reference. And it's supposed yeah. to be like her, you know. And mm -hmm. uh, But in this one, it's like, I mean, the term comes from, you know, black side, like... Uh, black ops. I mean, it, it, well, but, or, yeah, like, or a place where you, you'd extradite prisoners for, you know, mm -hmm. unofficial trial and this and that. And so, I mean, part of the game is set in Iraq, which is interesting. A lot of war games they're flat out you know that that's what they do is contemporary like conflict won't dare to go there they'll they'll say okay this is set in zikistan or bullshitistan or something like that you know <laughs> and they always do that you know i mean zikistan is actually right from full spectrum warrior uh -huh. and its sequel full um, spectrum crossing guard so for this game of all games to say hey we're we're, we're going in direct it's not like the first go for it's right now you know mm -hmm. and i mean hey it could be a train wreck you start mixing some serious stuff in that with with the dudes in the latex costumes and that could be a recipe for Mm -hmm. for, for disaster but we'll see and like i said the guy talks a good game and part of his idea is to 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 go for you know the the philosophy behind old, the old uh you know 50s post-war horror movies where you'd say hey let's take our, our our fears of you know atomic weapons and have you know giant bugs and whatever or the commies next door and you have body snatchers and stuff and mm -hmm. say well wh what's the equivalent for our time what is it that we're worried about now and mm -hmm. what do we you know what are our big fears and like how can we translate them into something that's something as goofy as like a big monster flick or something mm -hmm. but it's still gonna it still resonates in some way i mean mm -hmm. the fear is real even kind of though holds up a mirror the manifestation of it is, mm -hmm. is hokey you know mm -hmm. so cool stuff there i wouldn't spend more time making fun of it they re they revealed a game called v i just gotta say something about the name it's called hour of victory and it's uh <laughs> exclusive to 360 it's another it's a world war ii medal of duty yeah so <laughs> hour of victory and it's like that yeah. it's like that kind of thing because we have day of defeat on our side right so mm -hmm. they flip the script say who wants to lose we're gonna have victory <laughs> and, then, and then you say well day that's not specific we can give them the hour and so it's like the next game is like we're getting to the point we're making fun of it we're talking about like uh a minute of cautious optimism <laughs> or, uh, <laughs> nanosecond like a nanosecond of fist pumping <laughs> like, nanosecond of half-hearted fist pumping yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of grounded fist pumping <laughs> Yeah, uh, you're really right. That 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 probably was a marketing meeting, don't you think? No, I'm sure. Why it was. didn't Day of Defeat do well? Other other names have been <laughs> hmm. uh, like Duty of Publisher. Uh, <laughs> yeah. would, be, would be pretty harsh. Uh, no, but the whole principle of that game, just to, just to throw it aside quickly, because I, I have been just so I'm not seen as you know being too inconsistent. I've, I've defended World War II shooters plenty, uh -huh. and this was the one I think <clears throat> that that push me over the edge because when they were showing it the whole premise is that three dudes win the entire war right at least in the european theater mm -hmm. uh, three american dudes and one of, well, of them course. is a sniper and he specializes in sniping and stealth and <laughs> actually no he doesn't even step specialize in, in stealth he specializes in sniping and climbing so he can like get up to where he can snipe another uh -huh. specializes in stealth and so he can like kind of sneak up and do a knife kill on someone which is really weird so these the example of the video you'll see yeah. on, on game videos is you stab someone right in the back i mean i'm not like a special you know operative so maybe that's a great way i mean maybe you've hit them through the heart in the back but it seems to me like you stab someone in the butthole and they'd make like less noise <laughs> you know what i mean if you're trying to be, you're trying to be stealth so <laughs> and there's that and, then, <laughs> and there's a quote i'm gonna see that was a really unpleasant image and then yeah. the third dude though is stamina like that the thing that sets them apart and the, the, i guess i was laughing is because the trailer establishing all this is just dead serious you know mm -hmm. it's like this old black and white film and this like high school acting dudes like sitting there smoking his cigarette he's got his helmet on the table and he's writing like writing letters to supreme commander or whatever and he's like and this <laughs> he's and this third guy is gonna help us he's gonna win this war for us and it's like he has got stamina and so i was like this stamina guy he can he you can, know like this dude can run so but he, the, he can last you know what when i mean you're watching, yeah so okay so basically we got the sniper a woodsman and <laughs> a woodsman. 
<laughs> okay. So, but it was like, okay, in any other game, don't you? You could do all this when you want, right? If you want to sneak, you could do mm-hmm. it to an extent. If you want to snipe, you just drop your car ninety eight or whatever it was mm-hmm. stole from the Nazis, and you use your, you know, you put a scope on it or something. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can all almost everyone can run, so <laughs> that, that kind of renders that dude less special. <laughs> Unless he's got some like Steve Rogers, you know, Captain America level super soldier yeah, like stuff flash. going on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he chucks his shield at everyone. So it just seems so ridiculous, and you know, and you're like, well, okay, like maybe I, maybe this was it. Maybe this is too much World War Two. You know, you know the funny thing is though, it's like, what, 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 <laughs> well, you lasted what? about twenty games longer than I did. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you just what you describe. Uh, what the game you described is basically what IDOS tried doing a year ago with uh, Com- uh, Commando Strike Force. Right. I mean, that's that's the game. There's uh there's the, the yeah, the, except they didn't have Doctor Stamina. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. You're right. There was the spy, the uh, stealthy Mc, McShooty, <laughs> and, uh, and and Mr. Stamina was the uh, guy with the knife. The thing yeah, is. Exactly. is the reason why I usually do defend these types of games is like, say, if you're like Brothers in Arms and Randy Pitchford's the guy associated with that, the producer, mm-hmm. the lead, lead designer, and when he comes out and says, "Hey, I've been a fan of this subject matter forever," just like, uh, what's his name, uh, uh, Olaf, the guy from the Il- Il- Sturmovic series. Mm-hmm. I mean, the guy who spent his entire life just completely mm-hmm. fixated on that subject matter. Mm-hmm. Like, like that guy. Wish, I mean, if he could go back in time and risk his life fighting him, and he says he would. Who knows? Whatever. But that's how serious the guy is about that. And the same thing with Randy. He really, really likes. He just idolizes uh, the veterans that he knows and he's, mm-hmm. that he's worked with. And you say, okay, this guy's behind this. You know, there's, this is this game is going to be profitable, but it, it's the result of of true passion that someone has. Mm-hmm. But I wonder, like, when I hear about stamina guy, I don't necessarily see that passion right away. So, I mean, to be fair, I'd have to interview him, and I didn't get the chance. I mean, mm-hmm. I was looking, and there was it was just huge lines everywhere. It, I, was, like I a, just, it was a big assembly line of, of interviews and stuff there, you know, mm-hmm. behind Midway banners and stuff. Yeah, I, know, I, I remember seeing, I, re, I do remember getting a sneak peek of that game at E3, and I was like, you know, guys, I, 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 I see where you guys are trying to go, but, like, I, you know, I, I gave a list of things that right. I direct, de- different directions And to you take could it. feel the difference, you know, like, when, when I Brothers and Arms was unveiled, mm-hmm. and you look at like the way that the squads are working, the fire team mm-hmm. and the assault team, the way that that all was coming together, the way that it was like, all right, instead of you know giving you Hoth or or the Normandy invasion, mm-hmm. uh, we're gonna it's all gonna take place in Carantan over the course of eight days, and we're gonna do. I mean, you could see, look at that, and you're like, okay, like this guy, this is for real. This guys are about it, you know. Yeah, I can't wait for Hell's Highway. I just by didn't the way. get that sense at any point watching it. It just totally seemed like someone had a focus group, and, and some kid was like. I like stamina, man. And, you know, like, I don't know. He can, su- he can super jump and yeah. So, Darren, you've been playing some Supreme Commander. Well, I should qualify this by saying that this weekend was kind of lo- lost in a haze. I did play some Supreme Commander yesterday with a hangover. So, my, my advice to everyone: if you're ever going to drink something called Ungape, don't. That seems like a bad game for a hangover. Yeah, really. Like, you that's know a lot to focus on. Uh, yeah, th- there's a lot of theaters of war going on. If your head's spinning, yeah. <laughs> No, but it was trying actually, to control. You realize you're trying to control the enemy's units. But I, but I swore that I wanted to try it yesterday, so I, I plugged in and I had my dual monitor set up, and it actually it worked. It, <laughs> it worked really well, and I'm, I'm just gonna say I'm, I'm gonna say let me wait for next week when I can actually really get mm-hmm. into it. I always I was only like one or two missions. Are you in. you're reviewing this game? Are you? I uh, don't actually peck oh, this, but oh, okay. But we have it in for review, Supreme Commander. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It looks great, and. Um, there's only one thing I noticed so far. It's like a minor thing, but still kind of annoyed me. Was okay. So yeah, for the for the for the five people that actually have two monitors to play the game. So yeah, you have. I mean, it's actually really cool. You can scroll in and out like on the fly between the two different monitors. So you can have like a world view on one and zip down, or you can have it on the other. Mm-hmm. But on one on the on one screen, you can only issue some commands. It's kind of weird. Like so, let, let's say I'm on the right side on the right screen, and I highlight some troops, and I want them to take over a base, or you know, you know, kind of convert a structure. I can't do it. It has to be on the left map, on the, on the, on the left screen. It's kind of a weird thing, and I maybe I have to get deeper into it or something. Mm-hmm. But Dude, two monitors, though, that's about, I know, that is way that's excessive. That's two dilithium crystals shy of going down to Radio Shack to get the parts to build <laughs> and, and, your own. And you know uh, what? I realize it. Build your own hyperdrive. <laughs> and, 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 you know, that was the ultimate litmus test for my, my fiance. If she actually puts up with that crap, she'll put up with anything. So Yeah, you know, the, uh, we were at this Games for Windows event last week where they were showing off that they were they showed prices, which looked freaking unbelievable. But oh, they were showing Supreme that, yeah. Commander with, 
with dual monitor support. And I feel like every time we've seen a demo of this game, which I am very much looking forward to, I'm an RTS fan, I'm a fan of, I was a fan of Total Annihilation, so I want to play Supreme Commander, but I have found it odd that every time they demo this game, they show it on the dual monitor thing. It's like, right. who, are you, who are you demoing this it's for? Like, all the companies do this. Editors, all the time. It's so absurd. I None mean, of us like, have this. At, at E3, Sony's showing like 100 picture and picture screens, or they're showing like mm-hmm. three right. and three monitors hooked up. And it's like, what's your right. reaction? And then it's supposed to be, <laughs> golly gee! <I> know. <laughs> and the thing is, when they're like, when I was getting Supreme <laughs> Commander demo, the guy kept like pointing out the things that were cool about the dual monitor. And I'm like, well, great for you, because right, I can't do that. Yeah, my yeah, my, my wife or my girlfriend does not let me put another monitor <laughs> on the desk. <laughs> yeah. Tell me what I can do with one. Right, that's divorce you know, court. Talk right to right there. Me uh, you know what? I'm a great salesman. Then what can I say? But anyway, yeah. no. But actually, they, like, they, they, I, that it's was for my work. <laughs> exactly. That's what yeah, I say every time. Um, no, but when I like when I told those guys, I, I told uh, I was talking to Chris Taylor about this. I'm like, dude, you got to have. I mean, if I can't get that same experience on one screen, it's going to be lost on a, a lot of people. Mm-hmm. And then, like, at the flip of a switch. To, uh, he had, he had, they let you split screen it. So. I saw that, and that was cool. So you can now do a split screen on a single monitor cool. so you can get that dual monitor thing on your Right, so monitor. I mean, that actually yeah. that actually totally diffuses the argument of, like, man, you're getting ripped off. It does, That's but then they still choose shit, shit, though, isn't yeah. it? Well, it's, yeah. that game, every time I see it, it's like the ant colony. <laughs> no, like, <laughs> well, when you play, yeah, you have to have that ant colony for like, definitely the world view because it, yeah. it definitely helps. But if you, if you split screen it, then you can focus on the action on one part. How does that game work when, when there are that many units? I mean, you obviously it, you can't micro that them. I mean, well, you just throw them all well, in together, and if you got better numbers and better unit types, you would come well, up with well, well, that's kind of what, it, what a lot of like a lot of RTS games default to. But right. there's, there's a lot. Of, there's a lot to micromanage from the, from a top level. Uh-huh. And one thing that's kind of cool is, I mean, basically, if you if you know the command structure, you can sit there and just go, okay, I want you to build this, 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 and this. You can like command. You can you can, in the very from the very beginning of the game, you can lay out exactly everything you want to happen for the entire course of the game, and then you just kind of like modify step as you go. So the, so the thing is, you're not sitting there telling them, okay. It's it's like um Let's okay. Let's say you have like an engineer unit, and it's not gonna sit. It's not gonna go. Okay, I just mine the ore now. What do you want me to do? Mm-hmm. You, you can actually like. It's, it's not gonna wait for that command. You can actually just stack up everything and just kind of let let the computer do all the micromanagement crap, and then you could sit there and like worry about commanding the troops, which I think is kind of cool. Yeah, that's the thing. I, I mean, because I'm <clears> speaking it, as the guy that hadn't played one of these since Company Hero got but, me back but, into it. And yeah, I, I, I got a problem with the, with the million unit games. That's, I, yeah, that's, I do much better now in my dotage as mm-hmm. in the uh, smaller like Company Heroes types because right. I find that any game <clears throat> like Supreme Commander or any of these RTSs, no matter how complex they talk about the rule set or you know the unit balance or whatever to me it always devolves into I'm just clicking as fast as I can on hand. any unit yeah. button and I lasso and them all and I throw them, them up the yeah. the fight at the end and that, and that, exactly and I stop looking at the unit description right. and just click 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 right. go and that's what I hated that's, that's what totally turned me off to the to the genre yeah. and I was going to say that this kind of, that Supreme Commander in that case is the exact opposite of where Company of Heroes is because it fi- that yeah. focuses on, on the, like that micro, on that micro scale just yeah. t- like a couple units yeah. and whatever. yeah you got time to turn your tank around and to like go around a mine that you know someone mm-hmm. just laid and exactly and, and in that respect mm-hmm. the supreme commander kind of feels like you're in the war room directing all these troops and it really and like right. it, whether it's at x's and o's level or it's down on the ground it's like mm-hmm. it's a celebration of those massive armies if you're into that you're gonna love the game if not you might want to consider like trying the demo first mm-hmm. true True. And that, that's all I got to say about uh, Supreme Commander mm-hmm. for the moment until I actually get a chance to really dig Commanding deeper Supreme. in. But, but man, I got to tell you, try to try to keep track of like five different fronts in a battle on these huge maps. Yeah. When you when you're hungover, not fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got a problem with one front. I don't know, five, <laughs> yeah. five fronts. Forget that. No, I'm looking forward to it, but I, I'm nervous about my ability to play it well. Yeah, same I, thing, I, I, I want to try, but I had like my friends that I play just company heroes with and stuff, and the same reason they've been on the multiplayer demo for Supreme Commander, and they're like, dude, you're not going to like it. It's, it's kind of funny, though, like the first the first level of the game, it just kind of like you start off in this really small area, it's okay, okay, like, kind of like you know, walking you through, introducing you to how to play it, and it's like, okay, set up a, you know, a mass extractor and, and, a, and a generator, and it, and it quickly goes, okay, now take out this. Now, it's like within, within my first hour of play i was like this huge ass map and trying to like you know do a you know a, a pincer a pincer attack flanking somebody i'm like mm-hmm. okay it's i can i can get into it i mean like it was just it, it 
it jumps it jumps up pretty quick. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I already saw myself just like lassoing up units and saying, okay, let's let's move the artillery around the, the, the mountain range and have these guys come around yeah. over here. And it's just, it's really, I mean, part of it, you can, I'm sure someone's listening and like, dude, that guy sucks. He just doesn't even know right. how to play. And like, right. maybe that's the case. But yeah, for me, it's, it's that <laughs> moment. And I'll admit to that, I'm not your RTS expert, but but that moment comes though when. You get so panicked, there's so many yes. units that you are throwing them all, and like as soon as you're done throwing one group into the fray, you're already moving to click another, and you don't even get to see what's actually happening in the fray. You're just like crossing right. your fingers that you've got enough like griffins in there right. that they'll overcome <laughs> yeah. overcome the uh, guard towers, even though the guard towers are going to be sniping the hell out. Right, of them. I'm not the ideal player either, so it's it's lame to you know it's not a diss of the game, it's more just an acknowledgement of my own retarded skills. Right, yeah, because I'm just you know clicking fast and hoping my resources don't run out. Mm-hmm. And then I just click the mini map where I want them to go, and I'm trying to build other units. That's really not how you're supposed to be playing. So, I've been playing a lot of the uh, Titan Quest expansion. That's been my whole last week. Yeah, how was that? It's good, but it's hard. Really? I mean, even if like you leveled up your character and finished the first. I'm game? I'm playing the game with the character that I finished the sing- the uh, original game with, and I had to do the like embarrassing, horrible, uh, humiliating thing of calling the developer. <laughs> And, oh, a- and then asking for help. <laughs> can you either give me a twink character or a cheat code so I can get past this part? Oh, wow. I, I'm at the first boss battle of the expansion, and I'm like, I can't do it. Well, are you one of those? Are well, you, are you supposed to go? Is that one of those moments where they want you to go and beat on the same like scorpions like another for another three hours so well, you're strong enough to? Well, fight that's the boss? what I'm. Either I'm not high enough level, or just because if that's the case, that is that's, a that's no. Yeah, I don't crap. blame the game actually. I really don't. I because. I believe that the build of the character I made it, it is kind of weak. I, I think I didn't allocate skill points right and things like that so that my guy is not as good as he could have yeah, been. Yeah, but, but is it right to punish a guy if you if you, if you, if you don't allocate you know, the skill points the right way? I mean, like, you know, if, if theoretically, you have all these different varieties of skills to choose from and, like, chain off each well, other in the game. To, to I'm being nice to the game. If I want to be mean to it, if I want to be harder on it, I can say I, le- I did legitimately beat the first game. I did with this character, and now this is the very next act of the game, mm-hmm. right? And it's not like I'm getting beat by this boss, like, in a way where it's close. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like I walk into the room. <laughs> and it's like, bam, dead. <laughs> no. So I can't even come back. Okay, this time I'm going to try going around the left, and I'm going to try hitting this combo. It, so then I go in again, dead. He's, clear, <laughs> no. he's clearly not, a fire elemental, so I'm taking my fire mage, and I'm just hitting him with fire spell after fire spell. <laughs> and I can't seem to figure out why he won't fall. Right. I think this game is broken. Right. Okay, you're mocking me, but see, that's th- this is the truth. This is the truth. That is how I That's w- what you're doing? No. You're hit- <laughs> I don't even play like Hennigan. Yeah. I know you don't hit the no, fire elemental. Elemental with no, the I'm I'm walking in and there's these three there's these three elemental characters basically that there's three uh, of them I called that one. Uh, <laughs> you did, well, what else are they going to be? It's a yeah. fantasy RPG. Okay, true. so I know. So that was like so, an Ifrit. So was and but every different I can't even like try the different attacks is what I'm saying. I can't go in and say okay, yeah, this time, time I'm gonna it. yeah because I'm just dead. Do you have to listen to any like uh, exposition or anything as you as you go into that part? Of, <laughs> oh, thank like, God. Every time <laughs> you <laughs> march, annoy your death to them. That's the reddest. They cut scene first. That? No. no like, unskippable cutscene. Ah, I'm here no. to destroy you. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, well, screw you. I'm going to hit you with the ice spell. I'm going to heal and then I'm pr- ah, I hate you. I damn you. Yeah. No, I, it, I, so I'm going to try it again with a different character. They're going to, they sent me a twinked character. Actually, I'm try that. One, of the, one of the things, like when you get to this first boss, I mean, yeah. was it one of those cases where you just like ran right to the boss and did you get a chance to like, like maybe there's like a hidden area with Uber. T- this Uber is what weapon? I'm saying. I die before there's any chance to do any of that. I'm just, I walk in and I'm dead. That sounds like that. classic, like Final Fantasy. When every time I quit a Final Fantasy, oh, game, yeah, totally. when they tell you, that's their way of telling you, like, you hey, fu- dude, we don't, we, we want this game to last 40 hours for right. you. So go back into that desert and just beat on those things. Right. Like, we took so much time modeling them. We don't want you to just fight 10. Well, I did. Go fight ask, another 300 right. and come back. And, oh, and oh, I, we'll I did ask the company so easily. if the level of my character is appropriate for where you're supposed to be. But the thing is, as Titan Quest never has was never that kind of game. The okay. original game was not a grinding sort of game. It was a linear experience where you went from area to area, and whatever area you happened to be in, it was always level appropriate. Okay, so that's what I'm saying. So where I am now, 
if actually it is a matter of, of I'm supposed to be grinding, then all of a sudden they put in some rules that didn't exist before. Yeah. And I would say that that's not but fair. The boss, as, as the boss kills you, he's not saying, go back into the wilds and fight the scorpions. Maybe then you'll be strong <laughs> enough to fight me. <laughs> so wait, so Sean Connery's in the game? <laughs> yeah. He says that to you every time he beats you. And there are, in that's fact, the elemental that's, voice, that's, dude. That's the Chicago way. <laughs> they working on the elemental voice. Uh, the elemental. Yeah. So that's been my experience. And, and, and also it's taken me away from WoW, so that's kind of suck from Burning Crusade. However, I was in, uh, I wanted to mention this to you, Sean, in particular. I was in uh, Burning Crusade a little bit this weekend on the 1UP Guild, uh, which is called Can't Quit You, and there is now a member of the guild. Thank you very much. Poop Sock. Named Poop Sock. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I, I, was, I was chatting <laughs> with him last week. Spelled uh, P-U-U-P, so he got past let, yeah. let it be I Let him rain. To, like... Someone was like, oh, he didn't make up that word. I found it on Urban Dictionary. I was like, I never said I did, man. I was like, just because I say something's cool. I said, that's my thing. I call things cool. <laughs> I own that word. I'm, like, I'm taking yeah, it back. Word you're supposed to know. If you play games, I'm sure you've heard it because you've been called it. Anytime you beat anyone at any game, I mean, there used to be different words for it. But, you know, the whole, like, well, I would be able to beat you if I spent all day playing, too. Like, remember that? Every <laughs> oh, sure. I'm like, dude, I spent, like, 10 minutes playing it. You right. spent 20. Like, that doesn't <laughs> but, uh, People will say that. For everything, Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, oh, sure. But that basically became the yeah. But I have a life. Someone, some genius said, you know what? There's a name for that. As a poop soccer, right? You play um, that someone you crap in the soccer. What, what was awesome when I played this weekend was uh, was there certain quests in World of Warcraft that are, are they're like kind of epic quest for the zone and if you beat them the game will actually do a shout in the chat channel to the whole zone let people say you know so there was actually a moment this weekend where it said all hail all hail poop suck. <laughs> all hail the poop suck. through the entire Woo. world yeah <laughs> and people care about this you know they're right. like as they're playing they're like uh -huh. mm. there's Ooh. another guy in now the I got now. no excuse i know poop suck did it i can go right right all hail poop suck. um also there's another guy in the guild now named uh uh turd nugget and that's see, not so boy, clever. Boy, that, no, boy, that, not, but but that also came from. Like you can like if you just take one minute and you're like, I need a dumb name. Mm, adult beef swellings like that is uh, even better than turd hey, nugget. Mine is vomit, which I thought was pretty clever <laughs> in my own way. No, why am I? Uh, I take that. But uh, but the turd but turd nugget came from begat. <laughs> it, it was begat by poop sock. So I'm that saying started. So yeah, no. So this whole dumb fecal movement fecal got fixation. started by oh god fecal by you and by this podcast fecal so donut. So I'm sorry. And any any potential future one up uh, Just members ban on site. Or yeah, don't come up with something. We're we're done with that. A little, little more a little more veiled, please. I'm not saying because Poop Sock and Turd Nugget are probably listening yeah. now. But we love you guys. He, he's keep, keep on keeping on. <laughs> but but no more from other new players. What? Yeah. No, it's good. Tell okay. him. The, tell him the next guy. He Lay down like, G money or something. But only yeah, G he doesn't dog. have a G microphone. G money him. dog. Yeah, G money or yeah, G money dog. But you can't. You can't have a microphone and be G money. Actually, no, I want. A, I want a red dog. <laughs> Red dog. I want red dog. I won't. Right, so we got a. How are we doing on time, Brian? Brian wants to take Ryan, the timekeeper. He was doing the like wind it up boys thing. Uh, we're over an hour. He's are we over an hour already? We, have, we have so Holy much reader crap. mail. And we have a ton yeah, of reader mail. We have some awesome questions. Okay. Uh, let's, okay. Let's quickly get into a couple of reader things and then try to get out of here. But oh my god, an hour already. We can go oh my god. Oh longer. my god. Maybe length is the secret to cracking 37. You think? Yeah. Uh huh. Except, except, except the first tape. roll, twenty minutes or so. But they already fast forwarded. We're kind of balls. So we we got to make say. up for it. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a good or a bad thing? Uh, <laughs> okay, so uh, we I have some you. choice. <laughs> we have some choice reader ones, and the one I I, th I wanted to address the one hostile one. So, should we do that first? Because I thought he. Had I thought there was some good feedback for that. I, I mean, that week that we could have. I mean, just yeah. just looking at him, like, oh, I got to respond. Right, I know. That's yeah. why I wanted to read it. Okay. So, uh, someone else want to read it? Uh, Ryan, hey, do you want to read? Ryan, read it? Ryan, you read. Do the do the uh, angry voice dramatic Ryan. reason re uh, reading. You want me to read that? Yeah, me? yeah, read, read it. it. Come on. Oh my God, that's terrible, though. No, read it. Read it. Come on. All right. <clears throat> Jim Morgan asks, "Why don't you guys all go fuck yourself?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hearing you complain about your jobs aren't as fun as they seem really pissed me off. I would seriously cut off one of my balls to work or even intern in the games industry. I will mail you guys both my nuts in a neat little package right now if I can work at your office. <laughs> yeah, keep going. It gets better. So this Come is on. the guy that when you say balls is that. good, like this is the good. Yeah. Uh, oh, is this I say we got to take him up on this offer. Before you finish this letter, I said we if don't. there's a box 
box that shows up on my um, desk with two human testicles. Oh, no, it. don't even. <laughs> That's our new intern. You got the job, buddy. And, and, better, and better still, you won't be reproducing. Actually, I shouldn't say that because what if he does and then his mom's going to be mad at us? Do not do Jeff it. Green Repeat. said. Please keep your balls. Okay, keep reading. Don't, I'm sorry. Ryan, can read the rest. Oh, God. Okay. Stoke the rage, Ryan. <laughs> My current job. My current, so, my, so broke it up. My, to laugh. my current job in a woodworking shop sucks shit from a poop sock. <laughs> being around being around milling machines is dangerous, and nobody I work with knows what new raffle or leet means. <laughs> my whoa. boss. Whoa. Okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. My boss is stupid. Something. Let's just leave uh, it there. That one's kind of harsh. <laughs> I work nine hours a day, six days a week, so that rich people can have their furniture. You guys get to interview developers, play games months before we do, and just think about PC games all day. I know running a magazine must have administrative boring tasks, too, but seriously, you guys should be happy for being in the position you are. Okay. I want to say you were, you were reading that in a bit of a mocking tone there. However, I think he, it's a really good letter. Okay, he was angry. He used some bad words. He, he was bitter towards us. But I would imagine if you're a guy like this guy who's working in a woodworking shop and his boss is a stupid something, something that um, it would be annoying. But I think when we were bitching about our jobs that last week, I don't think we were – the implication wasn't – that we want to quit and and work somewhere that's easier. It was just. Is there a place? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> no. I mean, I think it's just everybody can complain about their job, right? And in a way, we are just sort of complaining that as much fun as it is, it's not quite as fun as people may think it is if they don't know. Because we actually have to spend a lot of our time actually making the magazine part. Yeah, right. But that's not to say that the making the magazine part isn't also kind of easy and yeah, it's kind like, of fun. It's like if someone says, it's tough. You, know, you spend it, your whole day playing games. And so we're like, well, I don't spend my whole day playing games, but you know, it's still rad. I it's spend still my whole rad. day thinking oh, about, oh, yeah. thinking about, right about them or talking you know, about them. And we acknowledge that. Them. We right. acknowledge that we're still pretty damn lucky. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You I'm know. very blessed about it. But um, I mean, like, and, I, and I believe everybody in this room here has worked some pretty shitty jobs over time. I know I have. Okay, and prep. so we have the perspective of knowing yeah. what actual work is. And I think it is safe to say oh, that this, this kind of is yeah. real work no. compared to some of the jobs we've all had. Do we want to have like a whip it out? Got the worst well, job. well, we could. I, I don't know if we have the time this week. We we have some, there's some fun stuff. I'm sure we've all oh, got some. Dude, I got but, real, but real quick, the other thing is like I think I asked Jeff for the dude's name because I knew I knew one of I knew one of the Hollywood stars had a situation analogous to our own, and that was uh, even Hugh Grant. His he, oh, right. <laughs> yeah, uh, Elizabeth Hurley, no less a woman than than Liz Hurley, mm-hmm. and he went out and like that wasn't enough for him. At some Devon, point, he was, like, he was like, you know what, this chick ain't cutting it, right? So he went out and he hooked up. He got something yeah. something nasty. Nice <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So I don't know. Maybe that's the equivalent of us being like you know taking the job for granted and saying. Well, we didn't get to play games all day. We only had to talk about them. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. If it was like yeah. that. This job sucks. So basically, this job is so, like the crack horror. No, for, for, for perspective, though, what? I mean, who wants to volunteer? The, <laughs> maybe that analogy doesn't hold up under uh, scrutiny. Uh, I don't care. It actually kind of does. I, think it, I get uh, what you're saying. I think yeah. it does. I think it just means you take for granted. No matter how good you got it, you're going to take it for granted at right. some point and do something stupid. I know. I was you're pissed, gonna, you're gonna, you're pissed gonna as hell at uh, Hugh Grant when that story came out. I'm well, like, everyone, dude. Yeah. yeah. You're like, Elizabeth Hurley. Yeah. Oh, right. And what are you doing? You're like, no, 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 no. So that's what this guy is doing right. to us. Right. And it's funny, and, it, and, it, and it's right. If that so, was the impression I think that we made, then the guy's totally right. He Paul. is totally right, which is why I was saying, <laughs> let's not mock that letter. Just, because just to, to right. start with the jobs. It's like, I work, you know, and I'm not saying like, you know, I could go back and if you want to do the odd jobs or whatever. Sure. Like, we could do that, but that's not the point. I mean, like, sure. full time, right. you know, during, during school, during yep. grad school, working yep. full time grocery stores. And that yep. was a huge step up over the other shit that I won't say that I did. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but for example, there, you know, it's like you work in a produce department and you have to carefully hand stack every pyramid for every type of food and then dovetail them all together. <laughs> the guys you work for, oh, no one cares. Of course, the customers come in and they just want to tear through it and they all think that they've got the best way to, like, pick out a watermelon or something and none of them know anything about it you know mm-hmm. and so meanwhile as they're tearing it apart <laughs> my my managers are like on my ass to like make sure the pyramids and stacks are perfect if anything is wrong or turned oh, the wrong if way, the cans turned around yeah, oh, i used to or, have a boss was an asshole or, about well, that. even oh. with fruit though imagine if like a cucumber there are actually two sides and if you ha- i had one cucumber the wrong way in this big display and that was cause for like almost getting written up and being yelled at and then you go back out after you listen to that from the manager you go back on the floor and you see the old lady just <laughs> ripping through that 
that thing, like shucking corn and leaving the <laughs> shit on the, on the ground, <laughs> like some kind of freaking Iowa heathen, you know? <laughs> and like and every minute I'm, I'm in that kind of job. And then the next yeah. thing, so you get done with that, and then the next minute it's like, wet cleanup in the men's restroom, Sean. Can we get a wet cleanup in the men's restroom? And a wet cleanup <laughs> is exactly what you think you. it is. Uh, and so, dude. I mean, that kind of stuff would go on, you know, 40 hours a week, and then I would often do shifts, you know, 2 a.m. I was when I would start to get off at noon the next day. Um, so, yes, that sort of thing definitely put it in perspective of how fortunate I feel mm-hmm. to have this position mm-hmm. today. Mm-hmm. And so don't ever let me say right. otherwise. Oh, I, yeah. I feel extremely grateful and, and blessed <laughs> to be doing what I'm doing. <laughs> no, I'd say for me, I, I think probably the, the, wor- the worst thing about my job is that I love it too much. <laughs> and that I sit there like, you know, I, 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 I've had jobs in like other magazines and other industries and whatever. And like, I would just, I, like, I would be a nine to fiver. I'd show up, get my crap done and I'd leave and that's it. I'd just go out and have fun with the boys. Mm-hmm. Now I'm playing games all the time. I'm focused. I'm thinking, Aww. I'm thinking, a st- I don't know, I'm not, I'm not saying that, but I'm like, but I'm also like, I'm I'll, I'll wake up at four in the morning and go, I have this great idea for a story. And I start yeah. writing stuff down. Mm-hmm. And like, I, my, my sleep patterns are all screwy because I'm thinking of articles I'd love to write. Yeah, just stuff. stuff that's fun that you exactly. normally do in your normal life. It actually, you can do it. You can share it with someone. Right. Like I can, and that's like, exactly you come up with some dumb video and then like, just because of the job I have, I can like get it on a video show that and, and, like thousands right. of people. Right. And, 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 and then people saying good job for you. Put it in a magazine. That, like, <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Like some wow, harebrained Sean idea. Elliott's a great employee. Let's do a story on that. You know I mean? Like, yeah, that's the, you know, I think it's, that's, 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 the ble- that's the blessing and the curse. And I think if you ask anybody in the game industry, it's exactly what they say most times: is I love this job because like it's like the thing I love doing most. But at the same mm-hmm. point, I wish I had more time to like you know sp- spend with my wife or whatever. Mm-hmm. You do see people um, who like. Some of you younger kids, um, <laughs> you know, who come to One Up, or, or like Scooter, who who I love, and he's been around for forever now. But like he, his first job when he was sixteen actually was at Computer Gaming mm-hmm. World, and he's just done that since he was right. sixteen. That's a whole and, other story. And part of me wants to say, you know what? You should go out for a couple of years and go work a real job. Totally. Because <laughs> well, I should say it's... now that he's laid off, how how nice of me. Uh, he heartless, was laid off by OPM. You heartless son <laughs> of a know. bitch. But you know, you want to say. Like you need a real job to put this in perspective. How easy right. it is. No, I've heard I've heard tons of that. Like when when Dan Shu hired me at EGM back when he was like telling me he's like, look, I'm really glad that you've done all this stuff. Because I mean, when I interviewed him, I flew out. Like the next day, I had to be back at the produce department. I remember going back at 2 a.m. the next day. He was like, no, this is good because there are a lot of people that just get entitled. They feel entitled to this, mm-hmm. and they come here and then. So the first thing they do, they go into a press junket and they're treating them to lunch and stuff, you know. And they just like feel like all this stuff is owed to them and. Just all, right. all yeah, I, I'm not saying scooters like that. No, no, no. But no, I mean, no, I definitely no. think it's a different perspective because you know, I do of, get that fear. Like you, you're like, you know what? This is too good. This can't last, and I know exactly what I'm going to. You know, it's actually kind of. Right. You know, it's right. actually kind of funny. At, at over. some point, I, the party's going to be yeah. over. <laughs> They're <laughs> so, going to be just stacking cucumbers. <laughs> right. So yeah. don't talk too much shit on it. You know, <laughs> it's, it's actually the point. I brought up that exact point in um, well, in the column I just wrote. It was because there there is this sense of entitlement that a lot of edit- game editors and writers think you know they they're in, they have. I mean, it's it's totally unfounded most of the times. Yeah. It's tricky. I mean, because then there's the other thing is I'm not, I mean, I definitely think, I mean, there's something, it's not entitlement, for example, to tell PR people like, hey, this is the kind of story that we want to do. Maybe you can help us, but we don't want it so that you tell us what the story is and who's right. writing it and this and that. That's not entitlement. That's doing your job. No, no. Yeah. I mean, what I'm talking but, about is the guys who but, think they're, like, they have this chip on the shoulder, like they're, like they're owed something. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. Let me in the front line next time and give me an extra helping pizza. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like versions. Oh, I got like oh, a you thousand were... versions of that same voice now. Every, <laughs> every one is... Different flavor. Of that voice for different so uh, so we, we, need we, a, we, we need hear you uh, we hear you Jim Morgan yeah. we hear you we are we are, we are not ingrates we actually <laughs> right, we need the voice ingrates. of the dude that basically surfaces for air in Nevada gravy the grunt oh I like the uh, such and such uh, hosted party better because they serve pickled muppet hearts. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Fraggle Rock. <laughs> um, That's when you know you're fat. When you yeah. pickled Muppet Heart. So why don't we take one more question and then? Uh, oh, there's so many good ones to wrap it up. That's there fun. are a bunch of good ones. We'll save them for next week, I guess. Who's gonna? Which one? Uh, I don't know. What do you say, uh, Ryan? And what, which one do you guys? You're the boss, think? Ryan. You pick it. That's right. Tony's not the boss. You are. And it was all silent, too. Ryan was silent during that last one because I think you came straight out of uh, whatever school into internship. No, but uh, Ryan, I believe you had crap jobs, didn't you? My only um, employment experience prior to this is retail. 
No, oh, at a comic I mean, book store, right? Well, no, yeah. actually, yeah. I worked at a bookstore. Okay. I worked at a Walden Books, and I worked at a Sam Goody music store. Okay. That's well, right. I remember get, the Sam Goody. shit on at those jobs. So people come in, and they're like, what's that song? What's 